Thank you. Um, I'm Michael Rowe. Let me uh, actually turn on this microphone. Uh, I tend to be loud, but uh, I guess they want the microphone. So. Uh, I work in IBM's uh, connected vehicle space, uh, working on building platforms in the Internet of Things for car manufacturers and OEMs and third parties uh, to take advantage of the Internet of Things. And uh, we got a little demo here I'll show you. Uh, we'll be able to sit later on. You can come over and I'll talk to you about it. All the source code will be available to you. We have it up on our Jazz Hub uh, repositories. There's a Git repo there. You can pull it down, uh, look at how everything is put together and play with it, uh, and uh, modify it and hack it and do all the, go all the cool stuff. So uh, let's see if, uh, if we are set. So, as I mentioned, I'm Michael Rowe. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. If you have any questions, tweet me. I will respond. Um, and uh, why connect a vehicle? Well, uh, one, it's huge. It's cool. It's fun. Uh, every car since 1996 has had this little plug available. It's right up underneath your dash by the steering column. It's called OBD2. Uh, it allows you to pull all the sensor data that's exposed through that port. Uh, you can also uh, do other cool hacks with it. Uh, so if you're really going to do some cool stuff, my suggestion would be these are cheap. I think this one was $79. It sets up a Wi-Fi wi hotspot in your car that your phone can attach to. It's got APIs. You can write to it. You can pull data off of it, and then you can write your apps. So if you have questions about that, we'll talk about that later. Uh, so connected vehicles is huge. It's a, it's a huge opportunity. Uh, and when we look at the Internet of Things, uh, the connected vehicle is really a microcosm of the Internet of Things. Everything that we talk about uh, from an IBM perspective of the opportunity to take a product and enhance that product, get feedback from that product out as it's out on the road in this case, add additional services, add mobile applications that connect it up to it, uh, extend it to different markets, etc. It's all there in the car. And uh, it's, it's really exciting to actually do it. And if you've watched anything over the last few years, there's all kinds of good hacks and there's bad hacks, but uh, lots of fun stuff that you can do with this. And it's only getting faster, and there's more and more adoption of connected vehicles out there. In 2013, there are roughly 8.8 .8 million connected vehicles on the road. Uh, this is global. And the prediction by 2020 is that it'll be almost 88 million. So almost. Uh, I mean, it's a tenfold increase that you'll see uh, out there, and, and that's out of roughly 109 million new cars that year. So most cars on the road in the next five years are going to be connected. So the opportunity to build a really cool thing that's connecting up the vehicle, the Internet of Things, and doing some cool stuff, this is how you get started. So I hope I got any excited about that, because I am. <laughs> um, and... Really, as I mentioned, it's, it's really also about the expectation that we as consumers have or as enterprises in how we interact with the vehicle. It's no longer uh, a, a thing. It's a thing with services. It's a thing that gets expanded to provide cool stuff around it. Um, when, when, uh, when the automakers look at the connected vehicle space, they see it as a way of changing the interaction with their customers. Um, 20 years ago, the car was a symbol of free freedom for most people. When they hit a certain age, they got their car. Now it's this. This is how we connect outside of our home. This is how we get out of the world, right? This is our symbol of freedom. So what can I do of connecting this cell phone to the vehicle to change that experience? And you see examples of, of auto manufacturers actually turning the key, your phone, into the smart key, right? The ability to have all your preferences in here, and no matter what vehicle you get into, it, it sets the vehicle up to your personal experience. Think of something like a zip car, right? So lots of interesting stuff going on out there, uh, lots of opportunities, and we're providing you with the infrastructure through the Internet of Things Foundation that you just saw of how to hook it up, through things like MQTT for that, that very fast, highly reliable over unreliable networks capabilities to communicate with the vehicle and back, and the analytics up in the cloud to pull things together to create solutions. And so, 
uh, lots of different spaces around here that you can do things, not just in the vehicle itself or improving the vehicle, but third parties, uh, insurance companies, commerce, etc. Lots of opportunities for building hacks and coming up with interesting designs in this space. So I hope I sold you that you really want to do connected vehicle as your design challenge. Uh, so let's let's uh, look at some code and, and test it out. So. Since I couldn't drive a car in here, um, we have uh, my little car simulator. Oops, that right thing here. This is a simple Python app. Uh, you'll get the source code to this. It's available up on the, one of those Git repos that I mentioned. I'll give you the links later. Uh, that shows you how, in this case, this is it's emulating the vehicle, uh, wait, you know, monitoring for messages from my cell phone. Okay. Um, and I'll show you the cell phone both on the screen via the Xcode emulator, but this is, uh, I'm on at and I'm not on the wireless here. And hopefully my speaker will be loud enough. And hopefully I didn't lose my network at any point in time. Great thing about demos when you do them live is they have an opportunity to mess up. So remember how to do this next week. Um, okay, let's restart that. Okay, so that's a lock symbol. So I published from my phone using the IoT Foundation service, connecting up an MQTT message that went up to the cloud, and the car is sitting there listening to find out when I sent the, the lock single, signal. Um, I can start the car, right? This is AT&T here. That's on the IBM internal network there. So just think about time and space and distance, right? Um, and my favorite, oh man. That's my about window, not my car. Um, and then we can uh, shut down the app. And that kills the Python app here. So the, the nice thing about this is it shows you from a design perspective all the parts and how they connect together. How it works with MQTT, how does it work on the Bluemix side, how does it work on the mobile side, and all that code is available for you out on those Git repos. So, and we'll uh, throw a couple more charts up here because, you know, that's what we do. Uh, <laughs> now, I missed the best chart, right? Here we go. Uh, so, what you saw today, here's the links. Uh, these are on our, our DevOps services for Bluemix, uh, aka Jazz Hub. Uh, these are the projects that are out there. Uh, both of them have their own Git repos attached to it, so you can go directly to Git repo and pull it down and use that as the base to you know, figure out how it's all wired up. Um, I'm sure these charts will be shared. They'll be posted on the forum. Posted on the forum, so you'll be able to get this. That way you won't have to type that in. <laughs> um, and just to wrap it up, right? DevOps services in Bluemix, you saw that. I won't repeat that and how it all hangs together. You can also, um, I believe in one of the repos, and I'll have to double check this, we might actually have a node red example for you so you can see it all on the web and, and use that to string the messages together too and use it as a debugging tool. Okay, any questions? Thank you very much, appreciate it.